Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we want to use this tonight, and with the help of the Lord, I want to preach about a place of rest. Thank God we can rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's look to him. We'll ask his blessing tonight upon the ministry of his word. Reverend Coker, sir, we pray, please. Merciful, wonderful Father, we again we come to you in that wonderful name of Jesus. We ask you to let a fresh unction rest upon Pastor Coke. Help him preach your word, God, and help us to have receptive hearts. Father, we also pray for Sister Poe, God. Continue to touch her, Lord. Strengthen her and be with her, Lord. Help us to be persistent in our prayers. Uh, if you are a miracle-working God, help us to do our part and be persistent, Lord. We pray for Sally, that you'll touch Sally and give her a, a healing touch and undertake for her. And again, we pray for Diane, if you, that you'll keep your hand upon her and strengthen her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. God is a good God. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord with you. Glad to have everybody with us. Good to have Jericho. Hi, Jericho. I said hi to you earlier. I'm glad that you're here. You're back there with, with uh, her aunt. You get, you get in the family of God, you got more family members here. Thank God. Amen. 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 I appreciate that. Thank, Thank God. God for that. Thank God for the family Blessing. of God. Okay. We're all in this together. Yeah, and right. We are here to help one another. Yeah. And God wants to encourage us tonight. I really believe that that is the direction that the Lord has been leading. We touched on this, we're going to preach about tonight, just a little bit in our Bible study. We begin to talk about how there are things that we can do that can help us uh, when we face struggles in our lives. And we talked about how that we can pray. Well, thank God, brothers and sisters, we have a direct line of communication with God. Yes. Not only that can we pray, we can read the Word of God. Thank God for the Word of God. When we read it, when we hear it ministered, come to a Bible study, hear it preached, the Word of God can build faith in our lives. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And sometimes, you know, after you've done these things, maybe you find yourself kind of still dealing with some struggles in your mind or whatever the case may be. And I shared with you what my pastor shared with me one time. He said, sometimes you just got to go take a nap. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to rest upon what you believe. Yeah. You got to rest upon the word of God. You got to rest upon your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't understand why things happen to happen. No one understands everything. Other than God, He knows why things happen. You know, people, and I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that goes around being critical of people's faith because they don't get healed. Because I've been sick too, oh, okay? and uh, I don't think I know anyone. I know people that have that I look to and, and have had great faith. I believe that they had great faith. They face things. They become sick. You know, I've had people over me that have taught me and been my instructors in God, and I've seen them face things in their lives. I don't question their faith or their love for God. It's just part of life. God allows things. Maybe we can go and we can read the book of Job. Why did God allow that to happen? That man was just, he was upright. Okay, we see by his life that he loved the Lord, but there were things that God wanted to teach him. And God allowed some things to happen in his life. Well, so be it. As we learned in our Bible study, God is God. God is sovereign. Then God can allow what God wants to allow. Okay, and you know, God, God, we don't uh, we don't blame God. We don't find fault with God. But neither do I criticize other people. Okay, we try to to be humble because you know sometimes it's the ones that are critical when something happens to them. Okay, and they want prayer and they need help. 
Okay, so let's not have that kind of attitude. Let's have an attitude, okay, of just looking to God in humility, and let's let God be God and do what God wants to do. Amen. Amen. Well, we're talking tonight about a place of rest. We can all uh, understand this. We, we all need rest at times. Mm -hmm. And there's times that, that uh, uh, you know, you just, there's nothing like being able to just get the rest that you need. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. don't know anything about uh, medical things too much anyway. Don't claim to. But I do know one thing, uh, something that I've learned and I've even heard doctors state it, that when you rest, your body heals. Your body needs to rest. Okay, it is a time that your body recuperates from just life, from from things that you do. Okay, things, uh, physical activity, mental activity. Okay, there's God designed us that way, and if we're critical of that, maybe we need to think about the Lord Jesus sleeping in the boat as they were on their way over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. What was he doing? He was resting, brother and sister. He was asleep in the boat, okay? Well, brother and sister, we are traveling with the Lord. We are on our way to glory, to spend eternity with him. And, you know, sometimes on this journey, we get tired. You ever been tired? Yeah. Okay, I like, I like getting places. I like going places. Okay, traveling, maybe when things were easier and we're not so restrictive as they are now. Okay, maybe when we didn't have the, the things in place, when you travel that we have now, when it was easier, I enjoyed it more. Yes. When my body was younger, okay, I enjoyed it more. Yes. Okay, but I don't really find a whole lot of joy in sitting in an airport okay, for hours on end, or uh, not even anymore. Sometimes I do. I, I remember driving to Texas to go visit my mother and dad. I enjoyed that. I had a good time with the Lord. Okay, but... But uh, sometimes it's not so pleasant anymore. You know, sometimes you just want to get there. Well, well we just want to get to heaven, don't we? Amen. We're on a Amen. journey, brother and sister. Amen. We're going with the Lord, okay, on our way, okay, and through this life where the Lord is directing us. And there are times in life when we spiritually want to rest, okay, where we we need to take some time and 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 stretch our legs, so to speak, spiritually, and get some fresh air, okay, from Almighty God. Get out of an old funky car, okay, walk around a little bit at the rest area, Amen. and maybe take a little snooze and recuperate and continue on in our journey. We're on our way, brother and sister. You know, we, we, we trust God, and we know that God knows what he's doing. He is the one that is in charge, not only of his whole plan for mankind, but he's in charge of our personal life. We have put the care of our life into the hands of Almighty God. We allow him to direct us. We're here tonight because we are allowing God to direct us. Amen. We know that we, God has directed us, and he's saved us. He's filled us with the Holy Ghost, and we are filled with the Holy Ghost. If we're not, we need to be. Okay? He's filled us with his Holy Spirit. He's directed us where he wants us to worship him. Amen. 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 He has with me. I know that God has directed me here, not only to this church here in Tucson, but to this church organization. I know beyond any shadow of a doubt. I'm the one that prayed. I said, God, uh, I got saved. I was out in the middle of the desert. I said, God, I, I'm not really uh, too much into Church, don't know a whole lot about it. I want you to lead me and guide me to a place where they are preaching and teaching the truth. And that was my prayer. And God did it. Okay, God directed me to this church organization. And, you know, things haven't always been easy in my Christian walk. But God has been faithful. And yes. he has been there. Yes. And when there are times that I need to rest, God has made the opportunity for me to rest. Thank yes. God for that. But sister God is with us. He's helping us. He said here in this Bible said, and Jesus was speaking, and he said, come unto me. Who is to come unto him? All are to come unto him. There's none other name unto heaven whereby we must be saved. Brother, sister, at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every mouth is going to confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man cometh to the Father but by him. 
Everyone needs to come to Jesus Amen. to find rest for their soul. Amen. Okay? Amen. Everyone. You know, there are those who are talking about being a Christian and serving God. And maybe maybe we are not uh, 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 burdened down and, and heavy laden by sin, but there are things that burden us down. But there are many people, brother and sister, that have not yet laid, away, laid uh, aside the, the weights and the sins that does so easily beset them. They've not begun this race. What do they need to do? They need to lay aside the sin. They need to look to Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of anyone's faith. Amen. He is the one that begins it. And he is the only one, brother and sister, that can help us finish it. All need to come to him. All who haven't come need to come. People are striving and they're laboring in sin and in this world to find satisfaction. Then they go to great lengths. They only to come up disappointed and to be let down by sin. Brother and sister, the way of the transgressive. We read in the book of Proverbs chapter 13, is hard. Sin is hard. Sin not only separates us from God, but brother and sister, it brings us down. It brings us down. It brings us down, brother and sister. It absolutely takes us away from what God desires in our lives. In any, any human being, there are no exceptions, my friend. Everyone, no one on their own is able to overcome and to defeat sin. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God we don't have to face it alone. Yes. It's already been judged. It's already been condemned in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been paid for. And we're willing to turn to him. And we're willing to allow him to be the Lord of our life. He will not only forgive, he will wash the sin away. Amen. We can have a new life. In Jesus. Brother and sister, we can come to him and we can find rest for our souls. But what about those that have already come? We've already come. We're all, I think most of us, we claim to be saved. We claim to have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, this is not just for those who are away from God. We talk about uh, there in Romans, we read in chapter 10 about whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's not a one-time thing. We don't just call upon the name of the Lord one time, maybe at an altar, and then we never have to call upon the name of the Lord ever again. Oh, we constantly call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. There's something about that name that is above every name. I've already shared the scripture with you that every knee is going to bow and every mouth is going to confess because his name is above every name. Everything, brother and sister, is subject to him and we can call upon that name and he has authority over anything and everything that you and I face. He yeah. is greater than any of it. Any problem, any situation, anything in this life that you face, Jesus is greater, my friend. And as Reverend was exhorting, he has given you and I a place with him above all of it. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He has a name above every name, brother and sister. He is the one that we call upon. We can continually call upon him when we are weary, when we are heavy laden. What does the Bible instruct you and I to do? We're to cast all of our care upon him for he cares for us. Amen. He cares for us. Why carry it around alone when you've got someone that loves you and who will help you carry that burden? I don't know how many times I pray, God help me. I pray that every day. I pray that throughout the day. God help me. Lord, I need help. Yes. People that don't know you, maybe they're in, you're in the grocery store or something, you see something like that, they think there's, what's wrong with them? There's <laughs> nothing <laughs> wrong with me. There's something right with me. Yes. Amen. I finally figured out I need the help of Jesus. Amen. And I don't really only needed him in, in, in and a, a few little things I needed in every aspect of my life. I am to acknowledge him in all of my ways. And he's going to direct my path. Amen. 
I want to walk with him. I want to talk with him. I want to commune with him. I want to converse with him. I want to let him know about my problems. Are you here? And he wants to know. He said, you have not because you have stuff. God's waiting on us, brother and sister. His ears are open. His hands, his arms, they're not shortened that he cannot say. He waits on us. Okay? We're willing to humble ourselves. Lord, I need help. Jesus, help me. Thank God he does. Okay? There are times that we become weary. We become heavy laden. Yes, we have a cross to bear. We teach you. We teach you correctly. Okay? We don't use grace as an excuse to sin. We're not to, to be defeated by sin. We don't teach and, and teach uh, those kind of things. We all have a cross to bear. We have responsibilities to God. We owe God something. Didn't we just learn that? Learning in our Bible study, because of all that he has done, we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our what? It is our reasonable service, brother and sister. Okay? It's reasonable for God to expect that of us. But having said that, Brother and sister, having said that, and understanding that we all have a cross to bear, sometimes we need help bearing our cross. Yes. Amen. You know, we have a wonderful example in the Word of God. Huh? There was a man who helped Jesus bear his cross. Yes. Come on now. Amen. The Lord can relate. Brother and sister, maybe it seems too heavy. Maybe things seem too hard. Thank God, brother and sister, we come to Jesus. We allow him to help us. Yes. Amen. Lord Church, yes. we have the example of Martha and Mary. Yes. Okay? Maybe previous to, to that Bible setting, maybe Mary was in there with Martha. Mm -hmm. Maybe they begin to fuss with one another. Uh-oh. Well, sisters would never do that, Pastor. Oh, no, no. Not natural sisters right, and yeah. definitely not Christian sisters. Uh -uh. They would never get stressed out and fuss with one another. No. <laughs> not in this church. <laughs> Pastor, go on. He'll just keep going. <laughs> huh? You know what? Maybe Mary said, you know, forget this. Martha, I'm tired of fussing with you in this kitchen. I'm going to go spend some time with Jesus. And she did. And Martha told the Lord, why don't you tell her to come and help me in so many words. And, she, and Jesus told Martha that Mary had chosen the greater part. She chosen something that was more important. Okay, now we all have responsibilities and things that we have to do. But sometimes you just need to spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time with the Lord. And you know, when we do, God helps us. God helps our spirit. God helps our heart. He helps us, brother and sister, to, to not be stressed out about things. To speak kindly one to another. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay? To treat each other right. Amen. We got to treat, treat each other right. Yes. Okay? Thank God, brother and sister, we can come and spend that time at the feet of Jesus. We come to him and we allow him to help us to bear our cross. Not only do we cast all of our care upon him, but brother and sister, when we spend that time, it's like a relationship with someone. You spend time, you nurture a relationship, okay? You have to work on relationships. Come on now. You nurture it. You, you, you endeavor to be kind to one another. You let love grow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen. Right. It's all on them. No, it's not all on them. Yes. We want to have friends. We have to be friendly. Amen. That's right. Bible. Yes. Amen. Right? Okay. Whew. Help me, Lord. I'm trying to slow it down a little bit again. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Brother and sister, we need to we need to work on that relationship with other people, and we need to work on our relationship with the Lord. And we can can't we can cast our care upon Him. We can spend time 
with him in his word and prayer in his house, that, brother and sister, we can allow that love of God to grow in our life. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that even overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. Brother and sister, when we begin to love God, we want to obey God. We have faith in God. We trust God. And that, that faith, brother and sister, causes you and I to be overcomers because we're not yielding to circumstance and situation. We're not yielding to our emotions and to our flesh. We are standing upon what we know about God. Amen. God is love. Amen. God loves me. God has saved me. My sins have been washed away. I'm a child of God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. You know, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You love God. You love God. You, you'd be perfect. All oh, right. Do you love your children? Those of you that have children. Amen. Amen. Are they perfect? Oh, no. Definitely. They ain't never been perfect. Never will be perfect. <laughs> huh? Man, I'm amazed at a mother's love. That whole thing causes you so much pain coming into this world. Then when it gets here, huh? All it does is keep you up at night, want to eat, and make a mess all the time. Yeah. For the most part. Until they grow up a little bit. And then they make different kind of messes. <laughs> yeah, really. And they still keep you up at night sometimes. Yeah. All right now. Okay? You love them. Yes. Real sister, God loves. God loves. He knows that we have to grow. He is the one that t tells us in his word that we are to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Okay? We are to grow in the grace. Huh? Thank God for grace. Thank God for a place, brother and sister, of mercy. Thank God for a place of compassion. Thank God. That's why mothers are the way that they are with their children. They love them. They have compassion. Well, he's just a baby. He doesn't know. Maybe 30 years old, but he's just a baby. <laughs> okay? God knows that we have to grow. Amen. He gives us that grace to grow in. Okay? Because God is love. Thank God, brother and sister, God can help us to get into this place of rest. Amen? Amen. We can rest in him. We've already talked to you about the man of Cyrene, Simon, by name. They compelled him to bear his cross. The Bible teaches you and I in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 13, that hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Are you here? Yes. He's not going to allow more upon you than you can handle. Amen. Yes. And he's going to make a way of escape that you're able to, uh, to bear it. There is a place of rest. Jesus, brother and sister, has made, has given you and I a place of rest. Yes. Okay, in the book of Hebrews, Paul talked about Joshua there in chapter 4, and he talked about them going into the promised land, and he's basically telling us there, that's not really the rest that God was talking about. Now, it wasn't that 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 God was, was wanting to give. Brother and sister, we've entered into a greater rest. We've entered into another rest. We have ceased from our sin. We have ceased from going astray. We've entered into the rest of Almighty God. Amen, amen. We have entered into a rest, brother and sister, with Almighty God. The sufferings of this world, Paul wrote to us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Remember that. God's doing something in your life. He is working on us, brother and sister. He is making us more like him. He is preparing us for heaven. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Huh? We're changing. We're growing. And one of these days, brother and sister, this corruptible is going to put on incorruption. Yes. One of these days, brother and sister, this mortal is going to put on immortality. And we're going to be changed. We're going to be changed, brother and sister, and we're going to stand in the presence of the Lord. There's going to be glory revealed in you. Listen to this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7. He's praying for this church, and he tells them, And to those who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. I'm thankful for that time, and we're looking forward to it. But I don't have to wait till I get there to rest in the Lord. Brother and sister, he is our rest right now. Amen. He is our rest right now, brother and sister. We can rest in him. Not only can we rest in him, he has given us of his spirit. And the Holy Spirit is specifically called a comforter, isn't he? He comforts yes. you and I. Man, there's something about it. I don't know. I've just been times in my life that I've experienced that verse of Scripture. We don't even know what we should pray for, right. okay, uh, as we ought. But the Spirit of God makes intercession uh, intercession for you and I. Huh? Maybe things are bearing down on you and weighing down on you, and you, you don't know what to do, and you, you've been praying, and then all of a sudden you just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Amen. You just yeah. begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and God absolutely yeah. begins to comfort you and he begins to let you know, I'm still, I'm still God. I still got you. I, I am absolutely in control. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid. Yes. Don't get all stressed out. It's going to be okay. We have a place of rest in heaven. I'm getting ready to close. We're going to come and pray. I'm going to read to you tonight after, out of John chapter 14. Okay? I'm going to read a couple of different verses of scripture here. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now put Amen. yourself in their situation. Jesus was going to be crucified. Then he would appear to them okay, for 40 days, and then he would ascend back to heaven, and they would not physically see him anymore. Okay? And it was a battle. What? You're going? Okay? Hey, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Come on now. He has gone to prepare a place for you and I that where he is, we may be also. But not only that, he didn't leave us comfortless, brother and sister. He has sent us another comforter, one who is with us, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, brother and sister, we have a place of rest in the Lord, we have comfort in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Tonight, as she begins to play and sing, we're going to come and pray. You know, we have a place of rest right up here. Amen. At an altar. Amen. So we can lay our burdens down. Give them over to Jesus. Tonight, as we come, Oh, what a comfort he is. Let us come and pray tonight. God bless you is our prayer. Rest in him. 